Okay, so what we're working on here is we're working on rate of change. We're working on rate of change. So rate of change is essentially the same thing as the slope, okay? Um, rate of change is just trying to identify how the function changes depending on what you're looking at, what points between what intervals, what are the graph what is the graph doing? So we want to be able to identify the slope or the rate of change of functions. So slope usually refers to when you're dealing with lines. Y equals mx plus b. M represents the slope. So you learned a slope formula. And the slope formula that you learned was y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And it works given that you are given two ordered pairs. So what rate of change is, rate of change is saying that, well, we may not be given the complete ordered pairs. We're given the function. And so if we're given the function, then the ordered pair isn't all necessarily just given as y. We use function notation. And so function notation says f of x1. and f of x2 because we know that in function notation we are introduced to the fact that f of x is equal to y so we evolve from using y to using function notation and so our formula evolves so this formula y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 is the slope formula based on y equals the formula we want we want rate of change, which deals more with functions and function notation. And so our formula evolves as our y and our f of x evolve. So f of x2 minus f of x1, which is the same thing. y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. But we are given this form in function notation because we are not going to be given the ordered pairs we are going to be given the function as you see here f of x is equal to x squared plus 5x and we are going to be given the x values x1 equals 3 x2 equals 6 so they are providing us the interval of x that we are looking at to identify the rate of change we must find the y components ourselves first and then plug those values into the formula in order to identify what the rate of change is going to be. So first we need to identify our function values. So we're going to look for f of x1. So what does that mean? That means that 3 is going to substitute into the function for every x component that I see. So we get 9 plus 15 So we get 24. So then we're going to find f of x2, which means f of 6. So 6 squared plus 5 times 6. So we get 36 plus 30, right? We have the function. Don't forget this is our function. So 66. So I have two ordered pairs. I have 3 comma 24. And I have 6 comma 66. So you can learn your new formula or you can just know that you're still using the slope formula. What is it? y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And you just work it accordingly and you substitute your values into your formula. Either way, it doesn't matter. f of x2 is the same as y2. f of x1 is the same as y1. But when you are able to map it back to the slope formula, then you do not have to really learn a new formula. If you understand what you're doing, it makes it so much easier to get it done. Okay? So we're looking at 66 minus 24, which gives us... 42 over 2 over 3 and 42 over 3 is going to give us 14 so our rate of change over interval 3 to 6 is going to be 14 and that's rate of change